Bill Gleason and I uh, go back many, many years. His scholarly works are well known to most any serious student of Aikido. Bill, thanks for being with us. When I went there in 1970, it was since they had just passed away. And uh, all of his, what I would term in that respect, first generation students after he had passed away, were still there teaching. You, know, you had better people and worse, more talented and less talented, but they were all really amazing. They all had something really, really special. And in their students, you saw a lot less of it. The next generation, it's gone. What happened? If, if, the, if the art is being passed down, then you should have some people at least rising up to levels equal to their teacher or above. What I'm trying to say is if you want to get the spiritual out of this, you must also have the physical because they're the same thing. What you're doing is merging with, when the Osense says heaven and earth, he's talking about the energy of the Kototama. He's talking about merging with the energy of Su, merging with the energy of E, merging with the energy of A, which is to have your body automatically create spiral form. In the process of creating Aikido, as I said earlier, the tools that he used were the Kototama, which he studied with Deguchi Wanisaburo, his spiritual teacher. And I might add that uh, Deguchi got most of his Kototama teachings from a much earlier work called uh, Kototama no Hisho, which means the secrets of the Kototama, written by a man named Yamaguchi Shido. So much of what Osun is teaching is just it's just word for word there, and, and it's all about the creation of the universe through the Kototama. You kind of look at least at the very fundamentals of the the thought of Kototama in order to to understand not only that spiritual foundation, but how we need to practice Aikido. What's called the parent sound is the sound of Su. And Su is, is pure movement without boundaries. It's, it's, it's the absolute lack of resistance to movement. So therefore you have kind of like absolute movement, which in practical terms becomes stillness and movement and movement and stillness. Within that state of being, if you will, a center is established. Once you have that center, when the mind comes into the equation, when concentration on an individual level comes into the equation, the life will, which is water key, gets a little spark of fire key inside of it and movement, which is refined in time and space, begins. When that happens, will becomes intent. And intent... Uh, the dictionary defines very well as the mind that is present at the moment of action. In other words, from your center, if you will, going out at all moments, at all times, in all directions from your center, what, what in, uh, Aikido people might call a key extension, is oh, since they never used the word extension, they used the word expansion because it's not going in one direction, it's going in every direction. And he stated very clearly that before, during, and after every technique, you should be expanding your key in the six directions. Now, who's doing it? If we don't understand why that's true and feel it in our body through the practice of doing it, then we're not going to get the very, very foundation of Aikido practice.